Hello and welcome to the news in Bahrain International with me Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a congratulatory cable from a Representatives Council Speaker, Vizier bin Abdullah Zainal, on the occasion of International Day of Democracy, which falls on September the 15th of every year. The Speaker affirmed that the achievements of Bahrain under the wise leadership of His Majesty and with His Majesty's support of the Legislative Authority since the launch of the Comprehensive and Sustainable Development Reform Process constituted a qualitative leap for the democratic process in the Kingdom through its adoption of principles that strengthen the rule of law and institutions and build modern and civilised constitutional foundations based on the National Action Charter, marking the inauguration of a new era of political reform and democratic life. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a congratulatory cable from the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh on the International Day of Democracy. Al Saleh expressed pride in the foundations and advanced principles of His Majesty the King's democratic approach, which enhances parliamentary life and political participation since the launch of the comprehensive reform process under the leadership of His Majesty. Al Saleh stressed the steps taken by Bahrain to develop its democratic path and expand political participation have become the subject of praise and appreciation at the regional and global levels. Al Saleh stressed that His Majesty the King's future vision consolidated and strengthened the democratic approach that accompanied the Legislative Authority's march since 2002. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a congratulatory cable from the Representatives Council Speaker, Fazea Zanal, on the International Day of Democracy. She affirmed that the achievements of Bahrain in light of the Comprehensive Development March of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the continuous support of His Royal Highness have contributed to achieving an impact in the success and progress of the work of the Legislative Authority, which placed Bahrain in the ranks of developed countries through a series of important development projects that have been completed at various levels. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a congratulatory cable from the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh on the International Day of Democracy. He expressed thanks and appreciation for the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness to increase initiatives and projects that enhance the principles and values of democracy, which will be directly reflected in achieving development and prosperity in various sectors and fields in the Kingdom, in light of the comprehensive development process under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Al Salah prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Royal Highness with health and happiness to achieve further progress and prosperity for the Kingdom. The website of the parliamentary and municipal elections at vote.bh includes comprehensive information related to the electoral process to make it easier for voters and candidates to learn about the procedures for the upcoming election cycle. The website includes voters' lists and a service for correction and objection requests to the supervisory committees of the Governorate within its jurisdiction. It also includes the laws and legislation that will organise the sixth electoral cycle in November. The voters' lists will be available from tomorrow and for seven consecutive days in the headquarters and public places that will be determined by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments. مسؤولياتها وواجباتها الدستورية بكل اقتداء وتحرص على مزاولة دورها الرغابي والتشريعي من منطلق التزامها الدستوري الأصيل بخدمة الوطن والمواطنين وتعزيز مفاهيم الديمقراطية النابعة من ثقافتنا وقيمنا الوطنية العريقة والتي سطرها ميثاقنا الوطني المجيد The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, a President of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Chairman of the Board of Directors of Maharat Club, Sheikh Ahmed bin Ali Al Khalifa, and members of the club's Board of Directors. 
His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the club's multi-decade effort, which reflect its long history as the oldest sports club in the kingdom. His Highness commended the efforts of the club's officials, which yielded honourable results inside and outside the kingdom, and strengthened the club's status among its fans and Bahraini football enthusiasts. His Highness Sheikh Khalid was briefed on the club's future plans and programmes to ensure the development of the sports team's level and their affiliates in a manner that drives them to achieve further success. He noted the importance of continuing development efforts and supporting the administrative and technical bodies in sports clubs in Bahrain to maintain a high level of performance and competitiveness. For his part, Sheikh Ahmed bin Ali affirmed his pride in meeting His Highness, praising his follow-up and continuous support for Bahraini sports. He lauded His Highness's directives and interest in continuing to develop clubs and sports performance to support the sports sector. Under the patronage of the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Visual Centre for Sign Language Medicine was launched, which is the first of its kind health service in Bahrain for hearing impaired people. This service was launched in cooperation between the primary healthcare centres as Zain Bahrain and Bahrain Deaf Society. It will meet the needs of hearing impaired people through clear and effective communication with doctors and health staff. The service is considered an important platform for facilitating health services provided to the hearing impaired primary health care centres, which contributes to raising the level of health services provided in Bahrain. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, participated in a ceremony held by the Embassy of the United States in Bahrain on the occasion of the second anniversary of the Abraham Accords. The Minister of Foreign Affairs delivered a speech in which he lauded the directors of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to promote the values of tolerance, peaceful coexistence and cooperation. He also expressed thanks to the Ambassador of the US to Bahrain, Stephen Bondi, for hosting the event and for his initiative to plant an olive tree in the embassy to symbolise hope and peace for all people in the Middle East. Dr Alziani also affirmed that peace is the only way to reach a just solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in a way that guarantees security and stability for all. This event is incredibly meaningful to me. I have been working in the broader Middle East region for 31 years as an American diplomat, and I uh, served in Jordan at the time that Jordan completed its peace treaty with Israel. I was serving in Abu Dhabi when the announcement was made that UAE and Israel were going to sign the Abraham Accords. And now as ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, it really comes full circle for me. I feel like it's my life's mission to help Bahrain and Israel, two of the United States' best friends in the region, to build their relationship. Personally, as soon as I saw the signing ceremony uh, with the um, Minister uh, Zayani um, there as well on the White House, I said I must take part in it and uh, ran to my uh, superiors and say I want to be sent to the Gulf. So coming here to, to Bahrain as the first Israeli ambassador is a great honor, it's a great pleasure and I think it's, uh, it's a mission. Uh, and as I said uh, before during the ceremony, uh, to, uh, to turn this hope and to turn these words and these agreements into action and a plan of action and um, the vision into, into reality. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Daina, inaugurated the Ethylene Middle East Technology Conference. The event hosted more than 400 experts specialising in oil and petrochemical sector, technicians, engineers and ethylene specialists. The conference discussed operational efficiency, sustainability, exchanging expertise at modern technologies and ways to formulate the future of the ethylene industry. The Minister stressed Bahrain's keenness to provide the utmost support to these specialised events that benefit the economic knowledge development system, exchanging information, experience and expertise and participating in capacity building and skills. It is our uh, ethylene conference, uh, Middle East technology uh, and it is uh, it is uh, an opportunity for uh, those uh, in the industry to really engage network and, uh, and talk about uh, you know a lot of common 
uh, areas of interest, whether it be it's sustainability, digitalization, uh, process safety, uh, uh, because you know our industry now faces a, a lot of challenges, uh, whether it be it in uh, you know uh, on the energy front or uh, logistics or uh, a number of areas that really. Uh, of a concern to, uh, to those of us in the industry. And Italy is the backbone of our industry. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohammed bin Thama al Kabi, received the Vice President of Industrial Services Organization at Saudi Aramco, Fahad al Abdul Karim, and his accompanying delegation. The minister affirmed that the remarkable turnout to participate in the Bahrain International Air Show 2022, which will be held under the patronage of His Majesty the King on November the 9th to the 11th, reflects the efforts of the exhibition's higher organising committee, headed by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, and the air show's work team in cooperation with the Royal Bahraini Air Force in attracting leading companies in the aviation sector. The meeting reviewed Aramco's preparations for its participation as a gold sponsor of the air show and its aviation sector stand, displaying its helicopters and jet aircraft. al Kabi expressed thanks to Aramco's participation as a gold sponsor and said that the participation of Gulf and international companies in the show affirms a significant role in supporting the international initiatives and events organised and hosted by Bahrain. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna al Ramehi, participated in the 20th meeting of GCC ministers concerned with housing affairs held in Riyadh. She stressed the importance of implementing the decisions and recommendations issued by the Council, which contribute to strengthening the GCC's housing plans and experiences to achieve the visions and aspirations of the GCC leaders. The Minister commended the efforts and contributions of the Member States in the success of the previous session, which was chaired by Bahrain. She said that the Ministry of Housing had fulfilled its obligations regarding preparing a current housing planning and applications directory, drawing its content from the housing experiences in Bahrain and GCC countries, noting that this guide would enhance the planning aspects, including in the housing plans of GCC countries. The Prime Minister's Office announced the end of the registration period for the 8th edition of the Prime Minister's Fellowship Programme. The programme is an important pillar of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's initiative to strengthen and develop the skill set of the Kingdom's national workforce, who remain a valuable asset to the Kingdom's ongoing development. Registration witnessed more than 2,000 applicants from across various government agencies. All applicants are subject to a rigorous evaluation process that includes personal interviews and aptitude tests in preparation for the final selection of the candidates of the eighth intake of the programme. Standard Chartered Bank's Women and Technology programme concluded with the aim of supporting female entrepreneurs and new companies led by women in Bahrain. The programme provides a platform for female entrepreneurs to showcase their skills and nurture influential and innovative ideas in the technological field. The event was attended by executives from the Supreme Council for Women, the Central Bank of Bahrain, a standard chartered bank and Bahrain Fine Tech Bay. The programme provides the opportunity for 10 startups to join an eight-week training programme in addition to mentorship and training from a world-class curriculum. Standard Chartered has uh, initiated this Women in Tech program across the world. We have launched it in seven locations and uh, we're proud to have launched it in Bahrain. For us, we believe that technology is the future. We feel that women are, can contribute a tremendous amount in that area. Uh, there are a lot of very capable women and with this program we would like to give them the opportunity to develop their ideas and build this uh, woman in technology uh, cohort. This has been a great evening tonight uh, to have the third cohort of the Standard Chartered Women in Tech program take place um, now for the third year in a row developing women technology in Bahrain, uh, starting off with 10 finalists uh, tonight. And, and now we're down to choosing the last three. I think this program has a great impact for Bahrain, um, where we are, are, are creating women-led founders and women-led entrepreneurs to develop their solutions in the region and locally and in the region as well. 
We're so happy to win. Thank you so much to Bahrain Fintech Bay, to Standard Chartered Program, to the Supreme Council of Women, um, and to the Central Bank of Bahrain. We are so grateful to be part of this and to win, to be one of, you know, women in fintech and to be given this opportunity, it's great. Our journey throughout has been amazing. You know, we've been introduced to some great startups, had some great experience, great exposure, learning from different people um, and broadening not just what we already know, but, you know, jumping into new industries and learning so much more.